What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of The Sauce. So in one of my previous videos, I did a season thus far recap. So in this video, I wanted to do a season thus far, thus far? Does that work? Anyway, so rather than go week by week, game by game, give you the whole recap, because I'm gonna lose a lot of you doing that, what I'm gonna give you is the five things that I think are important to this season, or at least the five things that I've noticed thus far. All right, so without further ado, let's get saucing. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the COVID pandemic and how it's affected the Central Division specifically. So in the Central Division, of the eight teams that are there, half of the teams have only played six games, those being the Florida Panthers, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Carolina Hurricanes, and the Dallas Stars. In the first video, we talked about how the Dallas Stars didn't start off for weeks into the season. So that had an effect on teams like the Carolina Hurricanes, the Nashville Predators, and the Florida Panthers. The other teams have since caught up. However, those four teams have only played those six games. But in those six games, those four teams have done really well. Sticking with individual teams that I wanna talk about is the Montreal Canadiens. They look scary good. I love watching this team. There are so many new rookies in their lineup. Guys like Alexander Romanov, Nick Suzuki, who's picking up after last year. Yasperi Kotkaniemi, who's picking up after last year. Um, and then you just have their veterans like uh, Brendan Gallagher, their goaltender, Carey Price. Top to bottom, the Montreal Canadiens roster is looking great. Uh, there's really so many things to like about this Montreal team. Right now they're in second place in their division, just behind the Toronto Maple Leafs. Their record is 5-1-2. and two. Um, They played two, ga two games, boy, oh boy, it's having a tough day today. Two games less than the Toronto Maple Leafs and they're playing worlds better. Uh, I think this is gonna be a scary team when they get going. So I'm loving this new division realignment because there are so many rivalries that are coming back. Loving watching Toronto versus Montreal, Edmonton versus Calgary. They were in the same division last year, but now they're just going to see more of each other and it's just going to be more hate. Washington versus Pittsburgh, which is always entertaining to watch. Uh, like I said in the last video, Pittsburgh has had Washington's number, but man, oh man, that's just fun to watch. Tampa and Columbus, which has been a new rivalry since the sweep from Columbus sweeping the Tampa Bay Lightning a few years back and then Lightning beating Columbus in the playoffs last year to get to the cup. It's just, it's fun to watch that rivalry as well. Chicago and Detroit uh, used to be a rivalry when they were both in the Western Division. Now that's slowly gonna come back, I feel. I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, tenacity and anger in that uh, series, but I mean, I'm sure it'll come. You got Vegas and San Jose. Uh, which is looking really good. Uh, Colorado and St. Louis is looking like a fun series to watch. There's so many goals scored in that series. And there's really not much more I can say about that. Rivalries, how can you be mad at that? So I'll kind of do how I did with the ranking videos, or not ranking video, the division prediction video that I had earlier. So I'll start off with the North Division. So I guess I want to do like a bad surprise, good surprise. The bad surprise there for me is that Calgary is super inconsistent. They're getting great goaltending from Jacob Markstrom, but they're just not getting enough wins. I think right now they're 3-3-1, three, three, and one, which is not enough to get you into the playoffs. And this team needs to pick it up. They have, they've had all the right pieces. They just need to be a more cohesive unit. Uh, I like Calgary and I hope that they start performing better because they're getting good goaltending. Their offense is phenomenal and their defense just needs to pick it up a little bit. I, I don't know, it, it's just a weird surprise for me thus far. I try not to overreact, just like I said in my last video, but I don't know, weird surprise for me. Good surprise for me, Toronto. So Toronto made a lot of off-season moves and acquired a lot of veteran players in their lineup. Uh, the first couple games, they looked a little rough. Everybody was already worried it was Freddie Anderson's fault. He's a horrible goalie. He needs to get traded. The defense is always the issue. Toronto media is brutal <laughs> on their team. But those off-season moves have proven to be effective. And up and down the Toronto lineup, they're looking good. We knew they would be a good team, but didn't realize how well all of these off-season moves, both offensively and defensively, would pay off. So for the West, I really don't have a lot of surprises. As I mentioned before, 
The top four that I thought that would be there are there. The bottom four that I thought would be there are there. You don't know my exact one through eight, but I mean, honestly, no real surprises in the Western division. The top teams are performing, the bottom teams are not. That's it. I know it's not a great answer, but I really don't have anything else on them. For the Central, my biggest surprise would probably be how hot the Dallas Stars came out the gate. As I mentioned before, I thought they were going to be flat-footed. I thought this was going to be an awful start to the year, and they weren't going to be able to come back due to the COVID protocols. But boy, was I wrong. I know they're without Tyler Sagan right now, who at a time was their leading scorer, and he's out for the season with an injury. They're elite starting goaltender Ben Bishop, who's been injury prone since he left Tampa Bay, uh, has also, he's out for the season. And then Jamie Ben, I don't know, but he's their captain. I don't know how long he's out for, but they're performing without these players in their lineup and with the delay that they had to the start of the season. It's fantastic. So kudos to the Dallas Stars. And for my bad surprise pick, kind of like the West one, I really don't have one. The Central Division they also have some of the fewest games played. So some, like I said, four teams don't have 10 games. They have six games played. So I truly don't have a bad thing. Uh, the bottom teams that I thought would be there are there. They're showing some upside, but not enough for that to be a bad part of this video. I think the bad thing that I have, the surprise for the Columbus Blue Jackets, is gonna be my number one, but we'll get to that. And then for the East, with the New York Rangers, it's it's sad. Uh, I, again, I hope they can turn it around, but I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to give it some time and let's see what happens these next few games. But the good is that teams like New Jersey and Buffalo, even though they're outside the top four as I record this video, they're doing well. They're looking good. And if they can get a couple more wins and beat those current top four teams like Washington and Philadelphia, I think they have a shot at maybe fighting for that fourth spot. I don't know if New Jersey can sustain this, but Buffalo, and I know the Buffalo fans out there are screaming like, finally, we could maybe do this. <laughs> but I don't know, I really hope that Buffalo sustains this because their captain Jack Eichel has made it clear he's not happy and he signed a long-term deal and they need to do whatever it takes to keep him. I think they need to bring in a better goalie, although their goaltending tandem has done well thus far this year. Their offense is clicking on all cylinders. Their defense is, I think, just starting to get it going. But all in all, Buffalo and New Jersey are looking good, but I think Buffalo can sustain more than Jersey can. Okay, so the number one thing that I wanted to talk about that happened this season was the trade of Patrick Laine and Pierre-Luc Dubois. This was huge. So, quick recap if I can. On the Winnipeg Jets, Patrick Laine and his teammate who also went going, wound up going with him, Jack Roslevic, both wanted out of Winnipeg. Roslevic wasn't getting enough ice time. It's a tough roster to crack. There's a lot of offensive talent there, but he wants out and he goes to Columbus with Patrick Laine and Jack Roslevic's a hometown boy there, so I think he's going to love playing in Columbus. So Patrick Laine is going to bring a lot of scoring to that Columbus team, or at least we hope so. The worry with Patrick Laine in Columbus is his defensive game, and the head coach there, John Tortorella, does not take lightly to BS whatsoever. So I hope that that dynamic works, because even though they're in the Tampa Lightning division, and it could be a scary matchup, I still want to see players do well and just give us good hockey. I'm an overall fan of the sport, even though I love the Tampa Lightning and that's my team. I'm a fan of the sport, so I want to see good hockey no matter what game I'm watching. So Jack Roslevic, Patrick Laine, they get shipped off to the Columbus Blue Jackets. So what goes the other way? So the other way, you have Pierre-Luc Dubois. And he also wanted out of where he was playing. He wanted out of Columbus, which is weird because he signed a two-year deal shortly last year and he wanted out. So I'm sure Tortorella, the coach, had something to do with it. He didn't like playing for him. But uh, if memory serves me correct, he's from uh, Quebec and he wanted to play in that area. Um, so the GM of the Columbus Blue Jackets was trying to find a deal that would work 
and even though he didn't go to Quebec, he's still in the North Division. So right now he's sitting in quarantine for 14 days because if you're traveling from the US to Canada, 14 day mandatory quarantine in the NHL. So he has yet to play a game uh, in a Jets uniform and just like Line and Roslovic have yet to suit up for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Here's what's even more interesting. So I've recapped that both parties did not want to play on the team that they were at and then they wound up getting swapped for one another. Hopefully it works out for both sides. Oh, the other thing that went with Pierre-Luc Dubois, a third round draft pick. No big deal, a couple years, I think it's 2022 third round draft pick, could prove useful, we don't know. So, my personal opinion, as it stands right now before seeing anybody play, I think Columbus wins this trade. And I'm excited to see how all the players play out on their new team. Could be very exciting to watch. So all these players wanted out of where they currently were, as I've said before, now they're out at new teams and I'm just excited for it. It was a huge trade. The most interesting part of this whole trade is that in the 2016 draft, Austin Matthews goes number one overall to Toronto. Patrick Kleine goes number two overall to Winnipeg. And Pierre-Luc Dubois went number three overall to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And now two and three are getting swapped for each other, more or less, in this huge blockbuster trade that just, it was crazy news when it broke. So very exciting news for hockey. That's the main thing that I wanted to talk about in this video. All right, everyone, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. A little quick season recap, just a few things that are going on. Again, I'm waiting for those 56 likes uh, on one of these videos so I can do my whole division breakdown starting with the North Division. So smash that like button, pass it on to your friends. If you didn't like the video, again, pass it on to your enemies. Thank you all for watching again. Click on the videos here. We'll see you next time. Stay saucy.